All right, my friends, welcome back to your Projector Shadows to Success coaching program. So glad that you're here with me. You can see that we are in the right angle cross of consciousness as far as the frequency field, what's going on. So I'm going to break this down for you a little bit so you can hopefully understand. And what you can see here is it's a very different looking body graph than what we've been used to for several months now because Uranus which is a pl planet of unusualness, gives us a lot of um, changing, strange, oh, sidetracking kind of energy. That planet has gone into retrograde. It's gone into retrograde back into the 27th gate. 27th gate being about nurturing and caring for one's community and one's tribe. So remember, if you have the other side of the channel, anytime the sacral center comes in and you don't have it defined as far as a gate activation there, you don't have it defined, but the transit brings us in. Potentially, you have a lot of um, amplification and distortion when it comes to having to take care of or do things for your tribe. And that's where we need to be very careful as projectors, not to overdo things, not to overextend ourselves. We have to learn the wisdom of caring for ourselves first. And in that way, we can then take care of others who are right for us. So the sidetrack that Uranus is bringing in is, well, in order to preserve and protect our tribe, in order to be responsible, we have to do it ourselves. We have to care for, we have to spontaneously jump to. And so that's one of the things to watch out for. Do not spontaneously jump to, especially if you're an emotional or a mental projector because you need your time to process, yeah, processing time. Now, starting at the top, we see that the sun is in gate five and this brings us fixed patterns the gate of fixed patterns here, collective fixed patterns. So the core essence of the sun is being imprinted into our body where we have perhaps some new rituals or new routines that we're going to be influenced to take on. Um, if you have the gate 15 on the other side, what can happen is now there's a flow. So it's a stabilizing um, influence on your extreme patterns and your rhythms and routines might take on a different kind of frequency. So that's something to watch out for where that core essence is being grounded in the earth is in the gate of progress and change. So gate of progress and change can bring a sense of boredom in our body graph. I'm bored. I need a new experience. I feel like a new experience. Would you like to share my experience with me? Let's let's have a collective experience. Let's feel something deeply. It's the hunger to feel something deeply in order to experience something new. So if you've got a 36 on the other side of the transit, what can happen is jack of all trades comes in, channel of transitoriness, and now you feel like you wanna do something different. So that's what the energy is mostly gonna to bring uh, today. Remember, this is 70% of the neutrino stream. Now where we're seeing things on the physical plane, gate 45 and, and 26 are still there. These are part of the stream of capitalism. So what we're looking at is a worldview, a frame of everybody talking about what we have to do, 45, and who has things, who owns things, and seeing maybe who doesn't have things or who doesn't own things. When it comes to the 45, it's about we're moving towards education. How do you control the tribe? You educate them, you influence them. People like us do things like this. So you see the rise of a lot of tribalism going on. You know, a lot of us versus them politically, uh, particularly on the political scene. And then the 26 is actually still in that line of censorship, gate 26, which is about transmission or manipulation control of memory. We're going to tell you this so that you believe that. And so that's something that we're going to be, we have been, and we're still going to be dealing with for a while. Moon moves really quickly. 62 brings this energy of, I think, I think, I think, I think it should go this way. And so there's this energy of this quality of having to must should because I think therefore it is. <laughs> and then Mercury comes in with this communication and thinking that is, uh, well, if it's to be, it's up to me. I've, I have to have my power. I have to be empowered and I have to communicate that power. I have to influence other people maybe with this power that I have. And it's all for me. I have to do it all by myself. 
that um, communication and thinking that's there. And then Venus comes in that brings an energy of creativity, the need for a deep creative self-expression here. And materialism disrupts creativity, which is what Venus is uh, giving us as a standard and our values and our relating. Mercury, or sorry, Mercury. Mars is bringing in a competitive streak, a need to be first. This is a gate of courage that leads us to want to leap out of the tribal life of us versus them and into our individual awakening to the higher self. And so this brings a lot of adaption, gate three, or sorry, gate 51, courage, line three, adaption, adaption to being able to put oneself first or to go to the higher plane of the higher self is what Mars is teaching us. It's an immature energy dynamic and that's what mu is mutating us right now because Mars brings a level of mutation. Now this is where I want to spend a little bit of time today because this is something that recently happened where Saturn recently went into uh, gate 60 not too long ago and then Jupiter just went into gate 60. Now both of these activations, big heavy hitters, Jupiter and Saturn, are things that planets that come together every 20 years and conjunct or conjoin. They come together in the same place every 20 years. And where this is coming together is a very interesting place in the body graph. Our pressure of the root center, which is our drive and stamina function, our pressure to be able to mutate or evolve to overcome limitations and bring about new order. So what the transit is bringing into our lives is this energy or rule, we could say, because Jupiter is the one who brings the rule either in your own life, okay, if it's your Jupiter, it's your personal law and protection, but in the transits and the program that we're all under the influence of, it brings a rule or a law, something that the program is teaching us. So if it's correct for you, you learn that the first step in overcoming limitation is acceptance. In transcending limitation is acceptance. Acceptance of one's place, acceptance of one's role, acceptance of your part in the totality of existence. So we have this rule that Jupiter is teaching us about, this rule of accepting limitation. And then Saturn comes in that gives us some discipline or restraint, okay, or constraint, we could also say. So when we're looking at Jupiter, it's very expansive as an energy. It's very, um, it's a failed star, so it actually creates neutrinos. And on our, in our body, on this body level, this is designed to mutate us as far as the imprinting of the transits, the influence of the transits. And mutation is not something that happens slowly. Our body graph is telling us that mutation is something is bringing an element of powerful, quick, perhaps like light years ahead kind of amplification of the potential mutation that can happen. And so what happens when you have a third gate in your own design, which is the harmonic gate to the 60, is that now we have, through the transit, an electromagnetic connection between you and Jupiter and Saturn. So that harmonic connection creates the channel of mutation, which is about advancing us as individuals. It mutates us. Now, in a large group of people, it innovates, it transforms the business. It's the rocket fuel that helps a business take off. And individually, what this can lead to is because of the transits, now you have a potential amplification and distortion. If you don't have the 60 on the other side, you have an amplification of the sacral center if it's not defined and an amplification of the root center if it's not defined. So what happens here is now there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of physical pressure on the body to evolve. And what happens on the other side is there's a, there's a response perhaps to bring about order, to overcome limitations. So the frequency here is individual. 
And what individual frequency shows up like is moodiness, melancholy, potential sadness, potential depression. And this is why I'm, I'm spending a little bit of time with this right now is because these two came into relationship in this gate and they are going to continue to come become closer and closer and closer. And on December 21st, so... Um, the winter solstice, they are going to be an exact conjunction. And that exact conjunction, like I mentioned, happens once every 20 years. It's not always in this gate, by the way. This is a really important evolvement of our species because the mutation is happening inside of us. It's not somewhere out there. It's not somewhere in the future. It's happening now. These are large planetary bodies that have a tremendous impact on us as humanity. So if you have the three, it's important to recognize that there isn't any choice to try and avoid this mutation. It's happening. And in alignment, if you're aligning to your decision-making strategy, strategy and authority, you could potentially experience a deep transformative, transformative shift. Remember, if you have the other side, gate three, or someone in your life has the other side, gate three, remember when you're with them, you're going to be amplifying them, and what the transit is bringing in is gate 60. So gate 60 is the gate of limitation. This is the pressure and the drive to innovate or to mutate. Innovate in a large business to mutate individually, okay? So your relationships, your body, pressure, the stress that you might be under. This is one of the format channels of our body graph, meaning this energy formats the entire body graph and it makes it more so individual. And the keynotes for that are mutation, melancholy. There's some potential sadness and depression when nothing new is happening. There's going to be a drive to want to overcome this limitation and bring about order. And thematically, this is an individual generative frequency. So we're looking at the thematics of either frustration or there may be potential satisfaction. So when we're talking about these two planets in that activation there at the root center, Jupiter is expansive. It's our personal law and protection in our own body graph. When we're looking at transits, what Jupiter can do is it will give us something that it's teaching us. Remember, it's a transit. It's the program. It's not you but we cannot escape the transit or the program. And so Jupiter is teaching us about overcoming limitations. Yeah, the first step in transcendence of limitation is acceptance. So accepting the limitations of the form of the body, of being an individual, of being an individual conditioned by society and our collective yeah, consciousness that we are all a part of. So Jupiter expansive, you know, teaching us something. And then Saturn is where we get disciplined or limited. So Saturn coming together with Jupiter can bring a level of, I feel like saying the word compression here, because if you or anybody has the three, the, the transit is really going to create that channel because these are harmonic gates in the channel. Harmonic meaning that you have the other side of the channel. So if you've got the three, really got to pay attention to this. There's the 60. You can see Jupiter and Saturn. 60 in line five. So that's where the great conjunction is going to happen. And this great conjunction is in a realm of the body graph that is about grounding, root center, this mutation to overcome that limitation. And in certain people, it's going to bring a spontaneous mutative change. So when we talk about the fifth line, it's about leadership. So there's this Jupiter in detriment, as you can see, where expansive energy that cannot handle the limitations is going to be where Saturn and Jupiter come become conjunct. And then on the other side, when it comes to uh, Saturn, because Saturn is right there, same thing. We have the detriment. So where there's going to be a natural desire for expansion, when limitations are essential, it's going to create confusion from the top. 
So when it comes to our society and, and all of the transits that we're going through right now, all of the evolving, faster and faster expansion and evolving of our systems of society that are breaking down and bring rebirth or rebuilt anew, for me, it feels like there's going to be, now let's talk about personal experiences. There's going to be some of us who feel really down or depressed. Remember what the word depression could be looked at. Instead of looking at from a chemistry and a hormone perspective, a depression in the earth is a place where water rests. And most of us, all of us are mostly water, right? So for this time period, it might be some time to take a rest, to, to just take some weight off, to take a load off, and to not try to push or force the energy. That's what can happen when you have a lot of strong individual energy. And as you can see in the transits, I'm just highlighting where all the strong individual energy is right now. A lot of it is individual. On that day, there's going to be that great conjunction. And some of us might feel really, really limited and sad because individual frequency chemistry can lead to this, I'm sad because nothing's happening. I'm sad because I can't get over this limitation. I'm sad because there's no movement. And so to just to honor your place in the to totality, if you have a three on the other side, you can bring about order through the harmonic convergence that's happening with Jupiter and Saturn and happening within you in your interaction with that transit. There is a buzzy feeling in the nervous system when the sacral center, I notice for me anyway, when the sacral center gets turned on. So it could happen in any place of the body. But when we're as a sensitive projector, like we all are in this group, what can happen when you get defined by the sacral center, either through transits or people, it feels like a buzzy sensation in your body, in the nervous system. Yeah. So that is definitely one of the side effects that can happen besides the deep Depression. So I want to re-explain mm, or reframe what a depression is. So let's imagine I've drawn a little um, depression in the Earth up here. Okay, so here's the Earth and there's maybe an asteroid hit and there isn't a depression in the Earth. So all of us are mostly water. And what does water do when it flows over the Earth and it comes to a depression? It rests. So I want you to reframe depression as a signpost of your body needing rest, okay, in this time. Because I don't want you to think of it as something wrong or bad. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing bad. It's part of the transits. It's part of the energies. And this is the energy, gate 60, is the energy of limitation itself. This gate is a pulsing pressure, and that pressure is on the body to mutate. The, the creative life force of us being human in this life, sacral center, which is what it creates in response to our life force. This, in terms of the collective, collective life on planet Earth, our knowing circuit is something very different. It's this experimental field where mutations can occur. And it might develop or it might not. It may be of benefit to you or it may not be of benefit to you, to the whole, you know? So this possibility of mutation, you have to engage with this through your decision-making strategy because it's grounded in the release of energy. Okay, there's this energy that is releasing within us. It's not going to happen all the time. Nothing happening, nothing happening, nothing happening. And then boom, spontaneously something happens. And so this limitation, this pulse, it manifests as a power burst. It's not a sustained flow. So you're not going to feel this all the time. If you don't have the three on the other side, you might not feel it very much. If you've got a defined root, you might really feel this, you know, stuckness, this limitation, this need for something to happen and yet nothing happens so you feel frustrated you feel stuck so there's this beautiful um, thing that Miles Davis the jazz composer, no composer noted and that is the space between the notes think about music if there's no space between the notes of music then we wouldn't have songs we would have 
really uncomfortable noise if there wasn't any space. If I was speaking without having any breath or pauses, it would be really hard to understand, you know? In that space of waiting for that response or that movement forward, that is when mutation takes place. In that deep rest, that is when mutation takes place. So don't be afraid if you start to get sad, you start to get mm -hmm, un melancholy or an uncomfortable, nothing wrong. Acceptance of limitation is at the heart of this process of the transits that we're going through right now. And if you do not align, you know, you feel really uncomfortable, something, you know, inside of your body doesn't feel good, it feels like chronic depression, obviously it's important to get some you know, assistance with that matter, but it can manifest as a chronic depression if this is something that you have defined in your design. You have to be aware not to try and force or push. Allow yourself to have space between the movement, the notes. Allow yourself to have time to rest, to decompress, okay? So that's my thing that I wanted to contribute to you guys as an awareness. And uh, welcome, Gretchen. So glad that you're here. So that was uh, Jupiter and Saturn, which gives us mutation and transformation potentially because it's up in the quarter of the wheel that is about this. And then, like I mentioned, um, Uranus changing us, <laughs> potentially um, sidetracking us into trying to take care of everybody. I'm so glad that you, that was helpful, Gretchen. And now this is another one that's individual as far as Neptune. Yeah, very slow moving. Neptune brings in misinformation. And this misinformation, illusion, art, spirituality is in the gate of grace. And gate 22 is about the fear of nobody paying attention to what you have to say, what you know you can try to say, or maybe that um, there's nobody worth listening to. <laughs> So this energy can bring us uh, an availability to hear what people really want, but there's also a potential fear that is there. So just to be aware, in the last piece here, 61 up in the head center, this is the mutation of our individual truth and our knowing. This is the learning that comes up, our transformation and our psychology. So the transit is influencing us to come together because it's extremely difficult for truth to stand on its own, to, for truth to stand alone. Truth must be loved in order for it to be accepted. So for each of us, my, my last final, final closing parting words on this transit is to remember that you, each of you have your own individual truth and no one has ownership of that truth except for you. You have your own individual knowing and your own truth. So try not to get persuaded or, or you know, distracted away from your own truth. Your truth is in your body. Your body tells you everything that you need to know. No matter what your mind is telling you, you do not have to obey it. You can come back home to rest, decompress in your body. Your body knows exactly what you need. So follow your body, honor your body. And I wish you the best with this challenging times that we are in and that are ahead.